Okay, I have another of Lou Malyi's games. She's playing against this gentleman here, Momchil Petkov, uh, who is a grandmaster. He was born in 2005, so he's about 17 during this game. Some information about the game there as far as their live ratings and whatnot right here. But uh, let's go ahead and get right into the game. Lou Malyi begins with pawn to e5. And we have the Sicilian defense on the board as the Grandmaster plays pawn to c5. Lou Malyi plays knight to f3. And we have pawn to d6. This is the main line for the Sicilian. These are book moves, as you can see. And now we have pawn to d4. And as is the usual, c captures on d4. We have knight captures on d4. And then we have knight to f6 by the grandmaster. Knight to c3 defending that pawn by Lu Malyi. And now we have the knight orf variation on the board. So the knight orf, that a6 move, grandmaster, knight orf, he of the many blindfold games. He played like 43, 45 people at the same time. I think both actually. Um, blindfolded, so he wasn't looking at any of the boards. So... Uh, Incredible grandmaster was Nidorf. And now we have pawn to h4 by Lu Malyi. Uh, definitely a reasonable move in the position. You can see that another good move would be moving the knight back here. But yeah, uh, Lu Malyi's move is just fine. Now we have pawn to e5, the best move in the position by the grandmaster kicking the knight. Um, and now you see why that knight was suggested going back here. This is just the best spot for it. So knight back to b3 by Lu Malyi, and now we have bishop to e6 by the grandmaster, and now pawn to f4 by Lu Malyi, the best move in the position, and now pawn to g6 by the grandmaster, bishop to e2 by Lu Malyi, best move, and knight to c6 by the grandmaster. Lu Malyi plays pawn to g4. This seems kind of crazy to me at this point, like, uh, yeah, what are you doing? You're not going to castle this, this is a lot of pawn moves. Um, seems like the pieces should be develop, developed, but this is an okay move. This is a good move. Might've been better to go ahead and capture in the middle, which that's not intuitive to me. So F captures F or F captures E5 seems awfully dangerous. Trying to open up the center of the board. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, pawn to h6 by the grandmaster and now Lu Malyi plays pawn to f5 attacking the bishop this is an okay move also pushing the g pawn you could see is a good idea here we have pawn captures on f5 so that's g captures on f5 we have g captures on f5 by Lu Malyi and now bishop captures on b3 um, this is supposed to be a, a great move. Uh, it is the best move and um, certainly makes a lot of sense. Lu Malyi captures toward the center with A captures on B3. And now we have queen to B6 by the grandmaster. Lu Malyi moves her knight to D5 attacking the queen. This is the best move in position. And the grandmaster goes ahead and captures her knight with knight captures on D5. We have queen captures on D5. And now we have bishop to g7 by the grandmaster, um, suggesting perhaps uh, maybe knight goes to b4, attacking the queen. Might have been a better move, but this is a fine move, bishop to e7. And now Lu Malyi moves her queen back to d3 here. And this is considered a mistake, although it doesn't really change things all that much, so we're not going to go into that. Uh, ends up working out the same on the board. Uh, now we do see knight to b4 attacking the queen, and Lu Malyi finds the best spot for a queen here on c3. We have rook to g8 by the grandmaster, and now Lu Malyi actually blunders and captures this pawn here on h6. Uh, so pawn captures h6 with a blunder. Uh, as you see, she should have moved her, her king to f1, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that variation. So the king should have moved to f1. White would probably play. The best move for them would be pawn to d5. Uh, queen captures on e5 for white. Uh, castles queenside. Suggested be the best move by the engine. Uh, boy, 
This is a dicey looking situation in general. Queen captures bishop here then on, uh, on e7. And uh, then knight captures on c2 by black. And probably rook to a4 would be best here. And then knight to e3 check. And the king would be forced to move back. And now knight to c2 again check. And um, I guess black, well, so, yeah, so now Lou Malie would be up by three points. It does seem like, well, I guess you can't force the draw because the bishop could capture. Okay, so yeah, clearly this would be a better position for Lou Malie. But we'll go ahead and go back to what actually happened on the board. So yeah, Lou Malie did capture here, which was a mistake. Let's see if the Grand Master manages to punish her for that. He does play rook to g2, um, which is definitely a solid move in the position. Uh, also might have played uh, pawn to d5 would have been interesting. And now Lu Yi moves her king back to d1, which is a bit of a mistake, although it doesn't make that big of a difference in the position, so we're, we're not going to go into that. Um, now we do see pawn to d5 by the Grand Master. This is the best move in the position. And now bishop to g5 by Lu Mao Yi. Uh, would have been better to actually just push the pawn here, suggests the engine. Uh, and this is, this is a pretty substantial difference. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this variation. So again, the pawn should have been pushed. And we'll look at that. So it seems a bit strange. But yes, the best move would be pawn to f6 here. Bishop captures f6, and now queen to f3, attacking the rook. And, um, you know, of course, the rook's got to, got to move. We have rook back to g6, attacking the bishop. And now white would play bishop to e3, queen to c6. And, yeah, this would be, this, this would be a better situation, although dangerous uh, for white. Then what actually happened on the board? Probably castles here or something like that next, since they're threatening uh, <laughs> threatening queen coming down and, and attacking right away here. Uh, so yeah, but this would have been a better way to go. Let's go back to what actually happened on the board, though. So Lu Yi did play uh, bishop to g5, which was a mistake. The Grand Master pushes the pawn to f6 himself, which is a which is an error him in himself. He should have played this differently. He should have played actually rook to uh, d8. And we'll go ahead and take a look at that variation quickly here. So the Grand Master should have played rook to d8 here. And then bishop captures bishop. King captures bishop on e7. And uh, this would have been a better way to play. Uh, the Grand Master has chances of being up about five points in this variation. Go back to what actually happened on the board though. So Grandmaster plays pawn to f6. Lu Yi forced to remove to move her bishop. She moves her bishop back to e3. It, it would have been better to actually go to h6 in this case. And, uh, and the, the reason why basically is this, this pawn fork here, as the Grandmaster does play that. So that's that's the issue there. And uh yeah, not a lot that Lu Mao Yi could do. Um, maybe just th uh, threatening the, the rook trade here would be best. Um, playing rook to g1, that's the, the best play. Uh, but she's still losing pretty significantly with that move. So it, yeah. Uh, Lu Mao Yi plays queen to d2 here. And now we have castles queenside by black. So no hurry to capture the bishop. Um, okay. And Lu Yi does decide to go ahead and try to rescue her bishop. She plays, she plays bishop to g1. Again, it would have been better to actually move the bishop over here. Not easy to see that just because of, um, yeah, there's not, there's not a lot of space for the bishop over there with that crazy pawn structure. Um, the Grand Master captures the bishop, which is the best move in the position. Lu Yi captures back. And now we have pawn to d3 by the Grand Master. 
Lu Maoyi repositions her queen rather than capturing. She re repositions her queen to c3, which is the best move in the position. And now we have king to b8 by the grandmaster, just getting out of check. And rook to g7 by Lu Maoyi, very strong move. And now we have pawn captures bishop with check. Lu Maoyi recaptures with the king on e2. Uh, we have rook to c8, attacking Lu Maoyi's queen. And Lu Maoyi actually just goes ahead and grabs the bishop, uh, giving up her, so uh, rook captures on e7. Rook captures on c3, taking Lu Maoyi's queen, but she does get the rook back. So she gets eight points of material for the price of nine, uh, giving up her queen for a rook and a bishop. And now the knight has to reposition, but just goes ahead and captures the c2 pawn. Knight captures c2 by the grandmaster. Lu Maoyi plays rook to b1. And now the grandmaster plays queen to e3 check. Lu Maoyi drops back to f1 with her king. Now we have queen captures e4 by the grandmaster. Lu Maoyi plays rook to e8 check. We have king to a7 by the grandmaster. Lu Maoyi moves her king to g1. And now we have knight to e3 by the grandmaster, threatening mate directly. And Lu Maoyi moves her rook to b2. That's the best move she could play. And now we have queen to g4. And it was in this position on move 34 that Lu Maoyi did resign the game. So she lost this one to this strong grandmaster. Uh, definitely can't win them all. I'm sure Lu Maoyi has went back and looked at this game and kind of seen what she's done right, what she's done wrong. There's, there's no uh, clear path to checkmate anytime soon. Uh, it's just uh, a material advantage. It's going to be hard for Lu Maoyi. It would be impossible, basically, for Lu Maoyi to coordinate her pieces. Uh, you know, the uh, grandmaster's got her in check. Of course, you can't block with the rook because the knight's covering it. So, you know, you move over here and you're going to get, they're going to capture pawns with check. Um, it's just, yeah. Like I said, this game is too far out from actually being over. But um, anyway, thank you for joining me for that. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Um, I also have Patreon. You can check that out in the uh, description. But uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.